I'm sitting down with Sandra Douglas Morgan, who is the president of the Raiders. Uh, thank you for thank you for giving time for us here at the Morning Blend. Thanks for having me. It's great to be with you guys. Obviously, you know the focus will be on the fact that you are the the first black female president in the NFL. But honestly, from my point of view, I feel, and I don't know if you agree, because this is your story. But the story really does start from the fact that you're a, a daughter to a, an African American father, a, a, a Korean American mother. What aspect of your parents' heritage helped to shape your childhood? You know, I think as as most people feel when they're adults and kind of reflect on their childhood. Look, as children, we we grow up. That's what we do. We are who we are. We don't really think about things like that, which I'm really thankful that my parents just wanted me to focus on having good friends, a good education, and good people around me. So I really didn't think about this until I was much, much older. And honestly, questions that you have, like being the first and having parents that are different races, those aren't things that we think about as children. I don't think those are things that hopefully we get to a point as adults that we don't really focus on too much. But I'm definitely a child of Las Vegas. Um, it was not uncommon for many of my friends to have one member in the military and one parent in the military and the other parent in the gaming industry. Um, we moved to Las Vegas because my father ended up retiring at Nellis Air Force Base um, as a veteran of the United States Air Force, and my mother worked in the gaming industry kind of on and off as I was growing up. And that was, again, common. I had many, many friends that, that had that similar scenario of a parent working day shift and another working swing shift, and just really thankful that my parents always had someone at home with, uh, with me and my sister at the time. Didn't think that was, <laughs> it was a great thing. You know, you wanted to kind of have some alone time, but they always wanted to make sure that we were on the, on the, on the straight and narrow path. Um, as, I, as I'm older now, I kind of reflect and listen and think about some of the stories that my parents would talk to about each other, right? Different challenges that they had um, in the workplace, whether it be challenges getting being promoted or challenges that my mother would face with certain customers in the gaming industry, you know, speaking to her in a certain way because she had an accent, maybe not understanding, thinking she didn't understand what they were saying. Um, and just, you know, that, I think hearing those conversations, hearing what they went through and what they've done to make sure that my sister and I had a, had a better life always made me think about how it's how important it is to treat people and never just to assume um, someone whether or not they can understand you what their position is in life or treat people differently because of what they do whether it be in the service industry or the Air Force or anything else and so that's something that you don't realize until you're older that definitely helped kind of mold who I am today and, and what type of leader I want to be. Do you think that shaped uh, your efforts for inclusivity, for diversity, whether that's subconsciously or something that's driven you because you've always been at the forefront and spearheaded inclusivity and diversity, whether that's in this organization or in previous incarnations of, of your work life, your, you know, your pursuit for excellence and to have every voice be heard. I don't think it's, it's subconscious in that that's how I was raised. I, I knew that growing up, especially in college, because I, I went to college at the University of Nevada, Reno, incredible institution. Um, but I was, there would be a classes of 100 people and I'd be the only person of color there. So at some point, you know, you realize I, I look different, people are going to have different expectations of me. And I, I always want to make sure that people have an opportunity. It's not about what you look like, or, um, you know, it shouldn't be about that. It should really be who's the best person, who's the, who's the most qualified. But we have these subconscious thoughts of people and put them in categories based on what they look like, based on what they sound like based on who they love, right? And that's not something that I um, have ever subscribed to. So is it me kind of saying, no, this is something that we must do? For me, it's it's a way of life. It's the way we lead, it's the way we treat people. And that's always what I've tried to bring with any organization that I'm involved in. I, I think as well, I think what, re what reflects so incredibly on you is with all these firsts, you stand as a figurehead for so many other people in the future, future young, you know, whether it's a female, mm -hmm. whether it's a black female, how does that responsibility shape on you? You know, do, do you feel that burden, not so much burden, but being at the, the forefront and the spearhead for, for something that's different and, and changeable? I would agree with you. I wouldn't characterize it as a burden. It mm -hmm. is a responsibility. I think it's also a, a duty. Um, if you're given an opportunity, I think there is a duty and responsibility to make sure that you are taking it very seriously and being prepared in what you do every single day. Um, so I take that responsibility, um, I do not take that lightly. Everything that I do, everything that we do in this building is, should be in the best interest of the Raiders. Um, when I was the chair of the Gaming Control Board, everything we did should have been in the best interest of the Nevada population and to also promote stabilization of the gaming industry. And so I always make sure that I'm focused on the vision and the purpose of the organization that I'm involved in and make sure that I'm doing everything I can for the stakeholders that are involved. And when you do that, 
And you do that in a way that you have people around you and people working for the best interest of the organization that reflect whether it be its fan base or its customer base or in the state of Nevada, you know, the, the population. I think when you ha keep that at the forefront of everything you do, you know you're going to make the best decisions. And for, for me, I knew there was going to be a bit of a spotlight. Honestly, this one is much bigger than I expected, to be honest. A little bit. Um, but, you know, just knowing that I'm going to do the best thing for the Raiders, I'm going to do the best thing for the people that work here, everything from players to corporate partnerships to sales to IT to HR and to our fan base. Um, if I know that every decision I make is for them, then I'm doing the best that I can and hopefully people will realize that. Um, I'm not only you know, doing it for, for show, I'm doing it because it's the best thing for the Raiders. And I think that will resonate and people will know that ultimately, even though I may be the first, I'm here because I was the best person for the job and it'll hopefully open doors for others. You know, the first, acknowledging the first, it is, it's incredibly humbling. And being in a state like Nevada that has grown so much over the last few decades and knowing that I was here, I went to the Clark County School District, I obtained degrees both from Nevada. It's been such an incredible benefit to me but to know that hopefully I'm doing a good job and can open doors for others and make Las Vegans proud and make La Nevadans proud, that's what I care most about and making sure that I'm definitely um, not just going to be the last. Like I said, Nevada and Vegas has shaped you as a person and I truly see that you have definitely shaped the future of Nevada so and Las Vegas. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Elliot. Really uh, thank you for sitting down with us and uh, go Raiders next season. Thanks, let's go. Go, go back Raiders. to those draft picks. <laughs> <laughs> no? She's going to no. put those drop yeah. big questions. <laughs> Thank you so much, Seriously. Appreciate you. Thank you.